Lieutenant Commander Robbie Ferguson's log, supplemental. It's Stardate 64284.3. It's been boring and even a little lonely at times here on the bridge of the Enterprise. We've been orbiting a Class M world over the past couple of days. It was previously uncharted by the Federation, but what we found interesting about the planet as we were passing through the system was that the species that we detected on the planet are very much like humans. As a matter of fact, Crusher, uh, Dr. Crusher, I should say, uh, took a look uh, a little bit closer at these uh, humanoid beings and found that their DNA is almost a 100% match uh, with our own. Of course, Captain Picard took this as an opportunity to give the crew some well-needed R&R, &R, uh, and uh, many of the crew are actually taking shore leave at this very moment, which is why I'm alone on the bridge. But uh, the locals just see our people as, of course, being uh, from another continent or another area of the planet so we don't have to worry about the prime directive or anything like that so this has been quite an opportunity for us to basically look into our own past being that these people being very much like humans uh, are at about the technological level of uh, a primitive earth I'd say about 21st century earth level of technology there's no warp drive but uh, they're experimenting with rudimentary spacecraft and things like that what I do find interesting about the planet is their uh, communication, uh, their level of communication within the planet itself. The interesting thing is that there is a vast network of silicon-based computer systems which are interconnected with fiber optics and at some points along the way uh, also copper uh, connections, but this particular network is being utilized by end users who are broadcasting on a global scale which I do find quite interesting. There's a particular broadcast that I've been monitoring over the past couple of days called, called Category 5. And according to LCARS here, it's uh, been broadcasting for about four years. Interestingly enough, though, I'm monitoring the signal coming from this broadcast uh, on one of the main continents. And it's being interconnected through this silicon-based computer network uh, with all continents of the planet. So viewers are actually tuning into this video broadcast from all around this planet. Very interesting. So I'd like to check it out further, and I don't see a problem with me leaving the Enterprise for about 50 minutes. Uh, of course, there hasn't been any Borg activity in this sector, and uh, we haven't had any issues whatsoever with the planet itself. They are primitive, and we don't have any concerns with regards to their technology. So I will beam down to the planet and uh, check it out a little bit further. I want to check out this show called Category 5. So. Computer, one to beam down to these coordinates, Category 5.TV in Barrie, Ontario. Internet Broadcasting, The Current Frontier. These are the voyages of the show, Category 5. Its continuing mission, to seek out new viewers from all around the world, to explore strange new technologies, and to boldly go where no show has gone before. Hey, where's the rest of my team? Oh, oh. Welcome to Category 5.TV. Uh, I, I don't know where Robbie is tonight. Um, here we are. Well, welcome. It's, uh, it's Tuesday night, and it's time for Category 5. Hey. Techno hey. How are you? What's going on here? Just thought I'd beam down and see how things are going here at Category you play 5. play hockey? Huh. Huh. Oh, okay. Hmm. How's everybody doing? This is episode number 162 of Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to have you here. We've got lots of exciting stuff going on for this, our Halloween special. All right. This is uh, Captain Robbie Ferguson. Lieutenant Commander. Oh, I'm sorry. Observe the pips. Okay. Observe right. the pips. I, I apologize. Mm, mm -hmm. So lots and lots of stuff going on tonight. We're going to be looking at Joe Kosher. Uh, is it really what it's cracked up to be? It is a multi-tracking studio software for Linux. So we're going to be checking that out in a little while. Uh, also, the disposable mentality of our world, of our 
just that mentality of everything is disposable. We're going to be talking a little bit about that tonight. And of course, answering your questions here at Category5.tv. Make sure you join us in the chat room. And Eric... Uh, I'm not typing very well tonight. <laughs> just mash the keypad with, <laughs> uh, the keypad with your palms, right? <laughs> How do you, how do you like work that, that, eh? I don't know. I think I got the mouse going, though. It's got the Barry We're Colts. Good. Yeah, the Barry Colts, kids. I represent. He represents. Yeah. Very good. Primitive life form. Highly hey. developed life form. Hey, now. Wow. I think he's got it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robbie, are we going to have fun tonight? We're going to have lots of fun tonight. All right. Especially you. Especially you. Oh. We've got the central air cranked up just for this guy. Uh, yeah, it's not working. It's, <laughs> it's kind of warm. I gotta have a sip uh, of coffee. What do you do? What do you do? Oh no! How do you, oh no! I was gonna say. This is just waiting for that. Okay. Well. <laughs> Oh, could be dear a, me. Could be a good show. Welcome to everybody who's uh, joining us in the chat room at www.category5.tv. <laughs> nice to have you here. Fantastic. Hey, you can get a uniform just like this. Genuine licensed Star Trek at cat5.tv slash costumes. Plural. Wow. I'm quite actually I'm impressed and amazed. A lot of people have more, like more people than I had ever expected have gone and bought a Starfleet uniform through our website, cat5.tv slash costumes. And that's a great thing. Uh, some of the proceeds from your costume purchase actually go towards uh, supporting the show. You get me on the payroll, I will be right in there buying one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, dear me. The payroll. That's oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, kids. Okay. <laughs> He's Eric Kid. Such a kidder. Uh, John, before the show, was mentioning uh, an interesting fact about your costume, and that's that you're not going to be able to fidget much. Well, there's no nano dots. <laughs> Even if you had nano dots, you wouldn't be able to fumble with them. But I have my super anti spyware pen. I could probably write down something. Yeah. And I, maybe use that to I got punch the keys. I'm yeah. not drinking my coffee very well, though. I, I may have to. Yeah. And uh, yes, I do have my teeth. But see, I somebody in the chat room was saying I can't be much of a hockey player. I have teeth, but uh, Wayne Gretzky that would had be the, teeth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm not much of a hockey player. Jot just reminding you that uh, that your payroll is actually two lumps of sugar in the coffee, oh, not sweet. one. sweet. Yeah. How sweet it is. Cheers, Jot. Nice to see everybody. Yeah. So you must, uh, I guess you haven't been able to click around too much, have I you? I have not clicked around yet. Are you looking for questions? I, that I, would, you know what? <laughs> that would be a start. You know how a couple of weeks ago when you... Uh, <laughs> You're like... <laughs> You know, I, I may I'm not need, supposed to talk with this thing in my mouth. I may need to rethink the mouth guard deal. Might have um, to. A couple of I'm weeks not ago, get, I'm not going to get too rough. A couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's much that's, better. That's much better. Much better. You're going to have to adjust your mic now. Yes. A couple <laughs> of weeks ago, Robbie, you were. Uh, well, I was commenting on when you took that out of the package, just how I could smell the geek mm. oozing from you. Mm. Well, sadly, <laughs> this has been in my hockey bag for a while. <laughs> That's not geek I it's smell. It's not geek you're smelling. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey. Okay. Well, you know, I figure that we did a really good job on the forward check. The back check, and we got a... Oh. I have no idea what he just said, but uh, let's talk about uh, flux capacitors and <laughs> whatever else we... Oh. Ancient Earth language. Yeah, ancient Earth language right there, John says. <laughs> <laughs> what is this primitive... Oh. Oh. Oh, you drink from that? No, that one was in the garage. Oh, I see. That's what that okay. is. Okay. So, you got some questions for me? I have a question. You must have. Oh, you do? I do. Brilliant. Um, have, you, have you had a chance to review? Because I have not. Can, I couldn't click. We can go was... over. Uh, I'll, let's bring up, uh, while you're looking at that, I'm going to bring up some viewer testimonials on our website, category5.tv, just to give this guy a chance now that he's got hands. Now he hey. can uh, click around. Uh, Clifford gives us five out of five sons and says, uh, hi, Robbie. I've lost your snail mail address. If you could send it to me, I will send off a special gift to you. Mm. I'm, I'm okay with that. We like prezies. Uh, okay, so uh, you'll get our, our mailing address right off of our website if you click on, uh, I think it's just contact. Uh, about us and contact us. You'll see our postal box there. And uh, that should do just fine for you. Clifford says, I've been keeping up with the program on a weekly basis, and I, ha <laughs> I have all the shows from day one. Fantastic. 162 weeks of episodes. What a vast improvement over time. Your new sidekick assistant fits right in. 
Thanks for that. He says you're a great addition, and I have to agree. Uh, here is a note that you might want to read before the show. Something from techrepublic.com.com. I think that link isn't going to work because it's got the two dot coms, I'm guessing. So, but uh, definitely that's in the, uh, let's give it a try. Let's see what Clifford's trying to send us here. All right. It is actually, oh, it, it re, it fixed itself. That's cool. It is actually dot com dot com. You see that? That, see? It's a little higher life form working in the Tech Republic. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know if that's just my DNS saying, hey, this actually works. Setting up file sharing on Linux. I'm not, I'm not really sure what you're sending me here. It looks like a, a list of a whole bunch of stuff. Well, why don't you try it without one of those comms and see if it's any different? Do you think that different? might do it? It might be a different. We can certainly give We're it a try. We're not sure. We are not sure. Um, but we are willing to try. And that's, that's... You could ask my ex. I've been wrong before. She'll no. tell almost no. anybody, even people she doesn't know. <laughs> so, uh, so that's a list. It looks like uh, one yeah, of the blog right roles for Tom. Tech Republic. Oh, it did too. Interesting. I'll have a look at that after the show and, uh, and see what it's all about. Uh, Clifford goes on to say, I have a standing email subscription to the Tech, Repu to Tech Republic. Uh, although a lot of it is above my head, I still like to get a feel for what is going on in the industry. Also, there is a lot of free software presented as well, and not just for Windows. Fantastic. He says, keep up the great work. I really look forward to each new show. Thanks again for a great public service from Cliff. Thanks so much for the, for the viewer testimonial there. And uh, yeah, thanks, I think I get it. I think that that's like, a, like access to the uh, techrepublic.com.com. Uh, .com. Yeah. So but you can check that Calm out yourself. Through, uh, oh. through his link there. Joni Navalinen uh, from Finland gives us five out of five sons as well, says, I just finished watching the non-technical third anniversary episode via Miro. Props on the preparation work on taking clips from past shows in the intro would have taken me hours. Uh, just a, a side note, that was actually done uh, automatically using FFmpeg. Now, I had to write a script to do it, so I created a script that went in and that grabbed... That took hours. Oh. It, it did, actually. Uh, but the night before the show, I was trying to figure out how can I do this because I was trying to get as many clips as I could. Uh, and I made a script to use FFmpeg to grab uh, like a five-second clip of every single episode that's ever broadcast of Category 5. It then took those clips and compiled them into a single video, and then I just superimposed the music on top okay, of that. Okay, so you were at the mercy of the software, your script, uh, you could have had a, you know. So I didn't actually go in and pick out specific portions okay. during that, and that's why uh, some people, when it was broadcasting, said, I can't hear the talking. Well, the, because it wasn't about the talking, it was so that you could see kind of the, the evolution of the show over the, the course of uh, the 150-some-odd episodes that had broadcast up to that point. Um, so that's that's how it was done. It was a simple script that uh, that I created with FFmpeg that went through the folder and created all these little clips. So, but uh, thanks for noticing. Uh, and Joni goes on to say, also, it was uh, enlightening to see the support folk behind the, the camera and otherwise. Becca, Carrie, Christy, John. There he is. Hey, John. There he is. There he is. He's always there. He's uh, he's behind the camera, but you don't get to see him as much. Uh, as well as mentioning uh, Hillary and others. Uh, thanks for the brief history on the show's formation, too. It was logical and inspiring. Cheers for that. And uh, Joni fi uh, finishes off their testimonial by saying, I hope to get your show advertised more so the viewer stats will show Finland among countries that follow the show most. And uh, thank you for that. I encourage you to tell your friends, tell, uh, tell your enemies, put up posters in town if you want. Uh, just let people know that Category 5 is in existence uh, at your local Linux users group. It's a great opportunity for you to share uh, that this broadcast exists, being that we are pr predominantly uh, Linux-centric. X-centric, too. Oh. Sweet. Sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want to I wanna hit... Can I hit one more? I think you ought to. Okay. Uh, Blogic from Hereford, UK says, I stumbled onto your show circa episode 60-ish, a YouTube clip about Linux brought Miro to my attention and I found you there and have been watching ever since. I don't often watch live because of the time zones but haven't missed many episodes. I find your shows very informative yet a pleasantly laid back viewing experience. The sponsors, uh, the sponsor plugs are kept to a minimum and the weekly banter oozes friendliness which is, it oozes, oozes friendliness. Yeah. 
cheers for that, uh, which is reassuring this, this is to a technophobe <laughs> like me. Top kudos on your per, uh, perseverance, and I'm warming up to Eric, too. He's got some big boots to fill, referring to <laughs> Hillary. Yours from Logique. Thank you very much for, uh, for your viewer testimonial. Hope I got your name right. And if you'd like to submit a viewer testimonial, you can get that to us at category5.tv. Click on Interact and submit a testimonial. And uh, so just hitting on that comment about the sponsor plugs and stuff, we do have sponsors here at the show. You see banners on our website, but one of my biggest goals with our, our sponsorships and with on-air tags and things is that it would never be intrusive. I never want the show to, to be pushing uh, sponsorships on you. And quite often what we'll do is we'll, we'll talk to our sponsors. Uh, last week we had Brother on the show, for example, so that we yeah. could uh, demonstrate some of their products. We've got uh, a printer to give away from them. Uh, and uh, it's a good product, but it was useful information. Useful information. If, it, uh, if you if you didn't catch last right. week's episode, I'd encourage you to, um, because it was about office organization yeah. for the home office user or the small office. I've actually put a lot of what was recommended by Mark into practice, and I found it really to be working well. That uh, touch it once, for example, he said, touch it once when you get a file, touch it once. Don't have to go back to it. So I've been doing that with email. Yeah. And I find that it's really, really helping me to stay organized and to be on top of everything. As an email comes in, I touch it once, and this is, you know, Mark's words are ringing, ringing through my, my head as I'm working. And uh, there's the email, I see what the, what the client is requesting, and I put it in my calendar, I respond to them. It takes me two seconds to, to do that, to schedule them in, and then uh, just send them a quick response saying, hey, uh, we've got you in the schedule for next Tuesday, or something like that. So it's really working. So I'd encourage you to check out last week's show, episode number 161, uh, where we uh, discussed a lot of those kinds of tips to keep yourself organized in business. Very, very cool. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got I, some questions for me? I turned my here? Canadian Tire hockey oh, yeah. uh, water bottle around. But that is very Canadian. Huh? That, that looks like it's straight out of the 80s. It's probably uh, got I've like, only had it since the 90s. It's probably got like, uh, is it BPA and everything? Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it does. Probably made. It's made in Canada. Fantastic. Yeah, that's something. All right. Um, I'll you don't talk see to them, that every I'll day. I'll talk to them about a sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there's a fella named Ryan, also known as Drumstick. Hey, Drumstick, a.k.a. Ryan. Who uh, has a, an inquiry All right. via email. Okay. So, I have installed a Windows application under Wine in Ubuntu 10.10, .10, and it runs perfectly. Okay. My question is, how can I create a link to the program in my Applications menu or on the desktop? Do I need to try reinstalling in Wine, or is there another way? Thanks. Very cool. Eric, i got to ask, what is your position in hockey? Usually flat on my butt. No, um, I, I <laughs> sometimes center, sometimes left wing. Left wing? Yeah. Like that? Just like that. Fantastic. <laughs> I, I come up with these things. All right. Put me in, coach. <laughs> okay. There we go. I type really quick so I can change things. Uh, so with regards to getting wine links on your desktop or on your application menu. Is that uh, anything like wine stains on your shirt? Wine as no. in. Okay. And, and people have said, because, it, it, because it's an easy way to remember, they call it the Windows emulator. It's not an emulator. And they say, don't call it an emulator. It's an API. So what Wine does is <coughs> it lets you run certain Windows applications on Linux, thereby okay. bridging that gap between Linux and Windows where users say, oh, but I can't use X application on, on Linux. So that's what's holding me on Windows. Well, as a matter of fact, if you check out Wine, you may actually be able to run that application on your Linux computer, thereby eliminating virus <coughs> uh, issues, Sorry about thereby that, eliminating fragmentation on your computer. So many benefits to it. So Wine is a fantastic application. Uh, I'll say. Programming interface. So what I'll do, let's see what I have installed in Wine. Wine comes with Notepad. Fantastic. There's actually notepad on, on Wine, right? So it's, it's the Windows notepad, I guess. This is not the, the official one but from Microsoft or anything. It's, it's like very it. similar. It's like a clone. But it is a Windows application. Mm -hmm. I don't actually have Minesweeper on here, Gadwell. 
Mine came with Notepad, and I've installed Multiquence. Multiquence is a multi-track uh, recorder. I was I was actually playing around with that, so but I'll just say that it, I did try to install it. And Does it deal with been MIDI and everything yet. as well? It doesn't. No, it's uh, it's strict multi okay. multi-tracking. So with this application, for example, what we can do, right-click. Now, in, in okay, well, we're we're asking about a, an application that we don't currently have a link to. Right. I'll, I'll tell you though, what you can do if you do have a link to it, is you can just grab that Wine link, drag it to your desktop, and now you've got Notepad on your desktop. Okay, click on it, and it brings up your Windows application. See how fast it runs too, eh? So that's for an application that you do have. If you don't have, uh, th that you do have a, a menu shortcut for. If you don't have, you can you can determine the location of your Wine applications by going into the dot Wine folder in your home folder. Any folder that starts with a dot in Linux is a hidden folder. So what you do is you bring up your your computer, so places, home folder, and then hit Control L to load a location and go to the end and type slash dot Wine. Just like that. So when you hit enter, it's going to take you right into the folder. Slash dot wine. So it automatically has slash home slash Robbie or whatever your username is. And you'll see drive C. And if you go in there, this is actually like a, a stripped down version of Windows Drive C. Internet Explorer as a, uh, as a folder automatically. Cool. Uh, so if I look at, for example, my multiquence, there's multique.exe, which if I double click on it, is going to run that Windows application. See that? So this is actually a Windows, a Windows only application according to the software manufacturer. So for me to create a shortcut to that, I can right click on it and go copy. Interesting thing, now I'm going to bring up my gedit. What's really, really cool about, well there's so many things, but one of the cool things that I love about Linux is when you copy a file, you are copying so much information about that file to your clipboard so that when you paste, the, the system's going to automatically determine what it is that you're pasting to and it's going to give you the appropriate information. As I'm opening, a, as I've got a text editor here, remember I copied that file, right? So that was the exe file. I right click on it and I go copy. And then I go over here and in a text editor, if I paste, it doesn't give me any kind of jargon. It gives me the exact location of the file. The full, use, the full path to that executable file. So all I need to do to add that to my Applications menu is go right-click, Edit Menus. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Applications, I'm going to right-click on it, go Edit Menus. That's going to bring up my menu list. Let's say I want to put it under Sound and Video, because that's what it is. It's a Sound and Video application. Over here, I'm going to go New Item. It's asking me for the name. I'm going to call this Multiquence. It's an application, the command. Now, if I paste in that command, it's going to give me the executable. But what I need to do is I need to put that in apostrophes. So I've gone home, and I've put an apostrophe before. I've gone to the end, and I've put an apostrophe after. That protects you so that if the file name has spaces in it, if the folder name has spaces in it, there's not going to be any problems. It's going to actually be able to execute. So now before that command, so I've entered that much so Where far. Does your comment show up if you add one of those? If you mouse over the uh, menu item. Oh, OK. <clears throat> so before the command, so I've got that in quotes, I'm going to type the word wine space. OK? Because that's our ability to run Windows applications. And then it is opening program files, multiquence, multique.exe. And see, there is a space in program files, so this is a good thing that I've got that in uh, apostrophes, in single which is single command. quotes, yeah. So now if I hit OK on that, Right out of the box, it's added multiquence with just a generic icon. So now if I go Applications, Sound and Video, I've got multiquence there, click on it, and it goes. Done and done. It is, in fact, coming up. It, uh, I don't, uh, like I said, I, I don't have multiquence working on the computer. But at least I can demonstrate that uh, how to create the shortcuts. Under Sound and Video, multiquence. See, it is actually coming up. But it gives me an error because I don't have DirectX installed. There it is. Okay. Sweet. So now that I've got it up there, again, if I want to grab that and move it onto my desktop or copy it onto my desktop, there it is. Okay. And if I want to change the icon, 
again, right click, edit menus, and go back to that item, right click and hold, and let go on the word properties. That can be a little bit tricky. Right click and hold, point to properties and let go. Over here, click on that, and that's going to allow you to select what you'd like the icon to be. And I'm certain you can find an icon that you're happy with, or of course you can use the actual official uh, icon for the application if you like to browse for it. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Lieutenant Commander Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Left Winger Eric Kidd. Oh, sorry. Do we have time for more questions? Yeah, but l tell me what's coming up in the news. I'd love to. I know. will tell you what's coming up in the news. <clears throat> Coming up in the newsroom. That was a good intro there. Yeah, yeah I thought so. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Sony to cease manufacturer of the cassette Walkman. I, they didn't already? I, I still have a... Did you say cassette? <laughs> I still have a CD Walkman, but my goodness. They still... Well... That's amazing. Maybe. People, yeah. people give me CDs. And, I, I still uh, have some cassettes. I, I don't even have a way to play a CD. Oh. Wow. Let alone a cassette. I do have a VHS player, though, wow. which is brilliant. I, I have a turntable with an actual diamond stylus and oh, everything. That's beautiful. Play vinyl records. Oh. oh. Yes, indeed. I'm coming over to your place to listen to music. And I'll bring uh, some coffee with you. Okay. There you go. Ubuntu Unity, or is that Unity? Unity. Ubuntu Unity. Oh, Unity. Boonity? Yeah, I don't know. Boonity, anybody, boonity? anybody out there got an opinion right, on we'll that? We'll call it Unity. <laughs> Unity <laughs> will breathe continual life into the Compiz window manager. Oh, <laughs> nice emphasis. Compiz. Oh, you. yeah. Okay. You know the thing that lets you do all the fancy effects on your desktop okay. with Linux. If I do, uh, not, oh not yeah, the, the yeah, the like if I do all this kind of stuff, and you know. Boom, that's all powered by Compiz, right? I did not know that. It is. Now you know, now I know. the rest. Compiz. The <laughs> They're going to breathe continual life into the Compiz window manager. That's fantastic. That's cool. Flash Video Replacer lets users watch YouTube, Blip.tv, and Vimeo without Flash. Oh. How cool is that? That's moving forward. Yeah. And the London Stock Exchange switching to Linux may serve as a wake-up call for executives who don't see open source as commercially viable. So stick around. That's incredible. For the latest news from the Category 5 TV dot newsroom. Dot TV newsroom slash news. Stick around. Depends There's if more you're talking about the, yeah, the, cat, the newsroom. Yeah. We have news. It's about tech in general. <laughs> I'm pretty high tech. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing glasses because I have to. People notice that uh, on Star Trek, they, they, they've miraculously made it so that everyone, including the blind, can see. Sweet. But uh, <laughs> I do All need right. to wear glasses tonight. Jot is saying that uh, here's some news about Entropia Universe, a.k.a. Planet Calypso. There's community advisors uh, on the gateway now at many times, which are real players to help out in addition to the computer-controlled helpers there. That's great. So you've got some real life people helping you learn how to use the, uh, the, the system. Very cool. What's up? Oh, I, I think they're, they're having some issues with uh, the way uh, we connect, pronounce things. That's nothing new? Something about having our own language and nobody understanding us. Ah. I think that's a little harsh out there. Come on now. OK. Keep it, keep it nice. <laughs> That's the thing about they know that we're also Canadian and we're and we're we'll let it we'll let it slide. Yes. It's okay. We take it because we're just so nice. <laughs> <laughs> let me get one of them out on the ice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Are we allowed to have uh, oh. questions from outside? That's that's oh. brilliant. I j thank you for that uh, workout. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah. Cheers. Oh. Whoops. I had the wrong date on the episode. I was so busy prepping for all the Star Trek-y stuff. I, wow. didn't, I didn't look at the camera footers. Cheers. <laughs> Everybody's like, what's going on? Thanks for noticing. All right, you oh, had something no. for me. I'm sorry not to get off on a Well, tangent. I had a friend ask me a question today, so I okay. thought I'd bring it, bring it here if That'd that's great. okay. Yeah. He's got a, a calendar. It's a Google calendar. Yeah. And he has it on his website. 
Mm -hmm. And he has the agenda view, and he was able to embed all that, and it's all very cool. But yeah. he has, uh, it's only showing four weeks, and that's the most he can get it to show really? at a time on his agenda view. And uh, when you take a look in there, it says uh, special view. You've got one day, two days, three days, six days, yeah. a week, two weeks, four weeks. Um, and that's as far as it appears to, hmm. to want to show. I've got our, uh, our calendar is displayed like a month calendar. Okay. So, and this is powered by Google Calendar. I've not, uh, I've not tried doing the agenda view. But it so just he's shows the dates where you have stuff, sort of in a list. Right, right. And he's only, and he's trying to go beyond right. the four weeks. Right, so he doesn't mark. have any dates happening in the next uh, uh, four weeks, and so it's not showing anything. You can click to see more. Oh. But it I see. So if he doesn't have it. anything booked this month, right. it's just a blank page. Yeah. So uh, you so can click if to see future or click of course to see the past. first the first thing I would check is is Google Calendar settings, which I've not I've not played with the agenda view much because I I just okay. I'm, I'm I'm so old school I I could not keep a paper calendar but when it's on my screen it has to look like a month calendar. <laughs> there's that's just something about me. Um, but if that were a limitation of Google. Let's just say that that is not a setting that, you, and, I, and I'll just say, you know, go through the settings, log into your account, and uh, and see if it, if there's a setting for embedding your calendar in in a different way. But if that is not available, then what you could consider is using the XML, uh, which is like you could set up an RSS aggregator for your XML version of your Google Calendar. Oh. Which then you could set just for how many entries you want and you can find a ton of different aggregators out there but for example if I go to my calendar we've actually got a link directly to our XML so those who would like to subscribe to it can and this has got all of the show information that I have entered in the calendar so how I display that information because this is XML right is completely up to me I can okay. load that file into my PHP application or whatever it is that I'm using as a server-side language, and then I can aggregate it and, and uh, manipulate and output the data however I like. But in that regard, it, you could just set it to show the upcoming 10 entries, and it will just give you all of them, as opposed to skipping over ones that where there aren't any that month. Right. Okay. That, that would be something I would check into. I'll yeah. have a look and go through that with him. And yeah, see, uh, I'll look, report back. What you'd want to find is a is a like a PHP driven free open source aggregator. And there's so many. Magpie, for example, uh, would be a, a good one. Magpie. Yeah. Okay. It's popular. It's well supported and uh, and just is a great application. You have to have a PHP server. It grabs the uh, XML file and allows you to. Spew it out however you like. Very cool. I will yeah. pass that along. I'll report back on how things went. Cool. All Users right. not on Joomla, eh? No. Okay. If they were on Joomla, there's something called news feeds. So just oh. keep that in mind. If you're on uh, Joomla, you can use news feeds to aggregate any XML or RSS. And uh, that's all built into Joomla. So that's pretty handy. All right. Cool. Well, we have another question. Also via email from, oh, from Nick uh, Lizaraga. Hey, Nick. Um, hello, Robbie. I have watched your show since you came over to the Lime Technology Forum. Anyway. Unraid. That's what that is. Oh. Lime Technology oh, the creates Unraid. Very Unraid, cool yeah. product. Very cool. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I would try you first since I cannot find a good solution. I need a method of taking files, name, I think file names from a certain directory and adding those file names to a table in either MySQL or SQLite. Do you know where I can find such a thing? Thank you and keep up the good work. Nick. Uh, the command I'm thinking of is opender, open dir, okay. or reader as an alternative. Uh, if you go to php.net, type in open dir to get the syntax. Let's see. And uh, first example, opens a known directory and proceeds to read its contents. So you've got to have a little bit of programming knowledge. I don't know of a prefabricated software to do this. But uh, as a PHP dev, I would say use opender, get the directory con contents uh, as a list into an array, and then parse it um, however you like. Spew it out with, a, a, you know, create your tables in MySQL, and uh, use update to 
to populate that information as it as it change as the directory contents change. Um, but uh, if that's if that's not something you're able to do, let me know because to to create something like that is not is not overly like it's not overly hard for somebody coming from 24th yeah. century uh, space. So <laughs> no, it's, it's reasonably simple. Uh, you could take some of the examples off of PHP.net and put it together. Open dir, and then just standard MySQL uh, population. So all right. Hope that puts you in the right direction. Um, and I'm assuming that you have PHP because PHP is pretty much on everything now because it is open and fantastic. But I would be happy to, to write something if, if you hit a snag if you're not able to do it. So just give me more information and I can do that for you. Not something for the show so much, but I'm happy to email. Cool. Okay. More questions? Uh, yeah, and uh, we've got to hit the news pretty soon, All too. All right. We'll do so that right after ready. this one, then. Love questions. You can send us a question live at Category5.tv. Or, of course, uh, join us in the chat room at Category5.tv. We try to keep an eye on that. And uh, say hi in the chat room as well. There's lots of people there who would love to hear from you. Okay. Well, this one's from Troy74. Hey, Troy74. All right. Hey, Robbie and Eric. Hey. I recently installed Ubuntu 10.10 while in... While installing, I had the option to install either 32-bit or 64-bit Ubuntu. What is the difference? Is it a good idea to choose the 64-bit version if your hardware supports it? Keep up the great shows, guys. I watch every week, either live or next day, and learn a plethora of useful information. Brilliant. Thanks for joining us. It's nice to have you here, yeah. Troy74. Uh, I would say definitely it is worth uh, going with the 64-bit at this point if you support it, if your system supports it. Uh, what is the difference? 32-bit is basically limiting you to um, 4 gigabytes or a little bit less than that of RAM, 3.2 gigs, 3.4 gigs, um, which obviously if you have more than 4 gigs of RAM in your system, you want to go with 64 so that you can take advantage of that extra RAM. Most systems these days are going to have you know, 8 gigs of RAM, uh, but if you don't, then 32-bit could, could be fine. If you don't and you think you might eventually upgrade, I would still go with 64-bit. It's important to make sure that you're forward compatible. Um, other advantages, of course, 64-bit is technically faster. It's, it's got a lot more uh, power as far as processing data um, at, the, at the kernel level, so uh, a lot more can happen. It can, it can process 64-bit applications faster. Uh, then a 32-bit operating system would process its 32-bit applications. So, but that's whether that's noticeable or not is it's probably not uh, to you. But certainly the RAM thing is a huge deal because the more RAM you have, the perceived speed of your computer goes up because your computer is never swapping to your hard drive for lack of RAM. That's a that's a key thing. Either that or it's not uh, ever. Um, hitting that maximum. If you've got 3.2 gigs of usable RAM, you run out of that pretty quick if you get into any kind of production uh, work or playing any games or anything like that. So definitely if your CPU supports it <coughs> and you feel like you may exceed the 4 gigabytes of RAM uh, or you already have, then you definitely want to go 64-bit. If you have more than 4 gigs of RAM um, and you put a 32-bit operating system on your computer, you'll basically be discarding the additional RAM, you won't be able to use it. Um, so, and that will degrade performance and, and it's kind of a waste because you've got the hardware. You might as well utilize it, right? Back in the days uh, where 64-bit was unstable or there weren't a lot of programs for 64-bit platforms and, and it was hard to get on a 64-bit system, it was tough. Those days are long gone. Uh, interoper uh, interoperability between 32-bit and 64-bit is seamless and you can still run your 32-bit applications if there's not a 64-bit app and, uh, and you're not going to have any trouble, I'm sure. Only ones that we still see trouble with are Adobe Flash, but as Eric is going to be telling us, there might be an alternative for that even. So, good luck. Lots of good comments in the chat room as well, category5.tv. Check out the IRC logs if you're not here live. Uh, this is episode number 162. Cheers. And it's October 26th. Yes, it is. It is. As it says in the footer. <laughs> as it says in the footer right there. You know? All I right. was I knew I was from the future. Is that for recovery? Well, maybe I was maybe he's, he's in the past. From and I transmitted from the past. my 
self, John. And here I am, one week later. Are you uncomfortable? That's, it, it's almost as bad it, it, as I, actually I'm not playing. sure if this is a geek I'm smelling, but it's are certainly you, something. Are you playing after this? I am. So you're just going to get in the car and drive there like Well, this? I, I, I may. Uh, you're going to like. Honest, Oscar. <laughs> you're going to really dislike this uh, uniform after uh, after so many hours yeah, of wearing it. I wear this at hockey. That'd be brilliant. It's going to look great with shoulder You might get beat up more, but. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I would certainly see you, yeah. All right. Well, you say? here's what's happening in the news. In the news. After 30, count them, 30 years, you were just a baby. I'm <laughs> sorry. After 30 years, Sony has announced the final lot of Sony cassette Walkmans were shipped to retailers in April. And once they are sold, there will be no more. No more? No more. What am I going to play all of those... Cassette. Cassettes on. <laughs> Did they ever have an eight track walk? No. <laughs> Sorry. The first Walkman was produced in 79, 1979, <laughs> and over 400 million were sold, 200 million of those being cassette based ones. Eric, I'm sorry, but uh, that's the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's like, yeah. I, I was, in fact, of legal drinking age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. We do span the generations here at Canada. It is class. truly the end of an era. Truly. Indeed. He's moving along. Moving okay, along. okay. With GNOME Shell and KWIN omitting CompIS from the Linux desktop, the future of the CompIS window manager and its development looks uncompromising. Some exciting news came to us from Canonical yesterday following Mark Shuttleworth's announcement at the Ubuntu Developers Summit in Orlando that not only will Unity be included with April's release of the Ubuntu 11.04, but it will be powered by CompIS rather than Mutter. I mutter. <laughs> Unity is a sleek, streamlined interface which is currently shipping on the notebook edition of Ubuntu Linux. Jono Bacon, the community manager at Canonical, the developers of Ubuntu, says CompIS is much faster, most notably on hardware that has traditionally had the most trouble from bug reports. Quality meets design meets performance. The exciting thing about this news is that it means CompIS is not dead and that development will continue in full force with the backing of Unity, which is continuing to grow in popularity. Canonical stresses that Ubuntu continues to be a GNOME distribution, shipping the GNOME stack and supporting the GNOME apps. The difference is Unity is diff a different shell for GNOME, giving users new experience that is designed for absolute ease of use. Canonical promises that support for the latest version of GNOME shell will still continue in the Ubuntu archives. That's great. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I love Compiz. Oh. A Firefox add-on hmm. is letting users drop Flash from popular video sites such as YouTube and watch their provided videos in non-Flash video format, presenting the videos in a native player embedded in the page rather than Flash. The performance benefit, particularly when viewing video in full screen, is rather substantial, especially for Linux users who are more often plagued with Adobe Flash performance issues than users on Microsoft Windows. Flash Video Replacer gets around the performance limitations with high CPU usage of Flash, dramatically changing the website source code on the fly, replacing the Flash video automatically. Sites look very much the same, but the videos themselves play back more smoothly, use less CPU power, and display much better in full screen mode. Mm. That's very cool. Users can install the Flash Video Replacer Firefox add-on by visiting addons.mozilla.org and searching for 161869. Got that? 161869. The add-on currently supports YouTube, Blip TV, and Vimeo and works specifically with on-demand pre-recorded content, not live content. Because Category 5 TV episodes are hosted with Blip TV, users with the add-on can watch past episodes in their browser without having to rely on Flash. While there are limitations, the concept is sound and users who want to get away from Flash or have trouble getting Flash to perform well will definitely want to check this add-on out. Or check out this add-on. The London Stock Exchange <laughs> has completed the transition of one of its smaller trading pools to Linux and in so doing has created what it claims is the world's fastest trading platform. 
the use of Linux on the turquoise trading pool and the speed increase it has brought comes just two weeks ahead of plans to migrate the main London Stock Exchange to Linux from its current Microsoft.net platform. According to think.co.uk, it uh, seems clear that while companies still hold to the old mindset that open source cannot compete in a commercial world, they'll get a wake-up call when they realize that their companies are in fact being traded on Linux-based systems and at nearly double the speed of the current Microsoft-based platform. Wow. Get the full stories at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru, Becca Ferguson, and our community of viewers. That's you folks. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. Category 5 TV is brought to you in part by Planet Calypso. This massive multiplayer online game is available as a free download from cat5.tv slash calypso. Now once you've got it downloaded and installed on your Windows computer, make sure you say hi. And there's something for everyone here on Planet Calypso, from hunting to mining, crafting, and just plain socializing and having fun with your friends. You can download it for free at cat5.tv slash calypso. If you're a Linux user like myself, of course this makes it worth the dual boot. cat5.tv slash calypso. I'll see you on Planet Calypso. So tonight I want to look at this application that I noticed as I'm installing Ubuntu 10.10. .10. It says, check out Joe Kosher. It's okay. a multi-track audio editor. So I thought, okay, I've got 10.04 on my system and it's available for 10.04, so this is a great thing. So we thought we'd check it out. So I installed it on 10.04 using Synaptic Package Manager. It's spelled just like it sounds, Joe Kosher. Maybe it doesn't sound like that. For all I know, it's... Could be Jockisher. Jockisher? Jockisher! Talking to a hockey player, it might... Be. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Notice how I changed the camera very quickly. <laughs> I created a test project to get us started, and I'm going to open that project. The interface is quite simple, and this is a free application available for Linux. That's not too bad. First thing you want to do once you've created a project is create an instrument by clicking on Add Instrument up at the top left. This is where we get into our very simple multi-tracking interface. Cool. So if you want to track with an acoustic guitar. Probably should do a bass drum first, don't you think? Possibly, possibly. We don't have a bass drum tonight. If you want to use, let's say you want to record uh, yourself singing along with a karaoke track. You can open Little lady. <coughs> is, that is that what karaoke sounds like to uh, you? Well, no, actually. <laughs> you can open an audio file in that case. The system supports MP3, FLAC, WAVE, AUG Vorbis. It's got a fantastic uh, file set based on GStreamer. I'm going to create a vocal track and just go Add. You'll notice as I add this track, it is ready to record. I've disabled the recording, I've enabled it, but by default, the vocal track is going to be ready to record. If I hit Record, dun 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 dun. That was fantastic. How cool. So now I want to add another instrument. <laughs> so, that looks fantastic. Well, you know, and we're just kind of zipping through, but neat that there's a half decent multi tracking yeah. application available for Linux, so that's pretty cool. So now I want to create another instrument, add another instrument, and this is where you say, okay, well, I'm going to add some more harmonies. I can add more vocals, right? Just create another track. If I want to add, and th what these tracks are really doesn't matter. It's for, it's for your visual representation, right? Uh, but let's say acoustic guitar. That's what I'm going to add. Now I've got a track that's ready for acoustic guitar. So I've disabled recording on vocal. Make sure you do that. Otherwise, it's going to record over my fantastic vocal track. That was fantastic. And then hit record on the acoustic Did guitar you want track. To give me the guitar, John? No, no, I guess <laughs> we're okay. I, I would if we had more time tonight, but uh, we just we're not going to actually do a production. But just kind of show the interface and how again. simple this is. It's a nice simple interface, easy to get in, easy to create your first multi-track, and uh, and get your way around. So I've created the acoustic guitar track. 
which I may have done before I did the vocal because now my beats are going to be completely unsynchronized. Uh, which, by the way, there is a metronome. Oh. If you click on the metronome, you it's can change the volume. It's a little guy lives in a big city. What does that even mean? A gnome? Oh. Metro? Never mind. Bad. Bad. <laughs> Bad. Uh, Bad. Yeah. So anyway, so that's ready to record. This one is off of record. And now if I hit record, it's going to start recording the second track. And now I've got two tracks recorded. One is an acoustic guitar, one is vocal. And good to go. I've got some pretty bad latency on this laptop, so there are some pops and clicks and stuff there. But I'm sure with uh, with your desktop computer, you're going to have some fantastic performance. You're going to enjoy that very much. It's called Jokisher, and I will post the link for that. I think it's called Jokisher. It's not Jokisher. Could be Jokisher. It's J O K O S H E R. Available at jokosher.org. Jokosher.org. Yoko. Sure. And it's available as a free download for OpenSUSE. There's a source tarball if you want to compile it. There is a Windows installer, people. Wow. I didn't know this. So for our Windows viewers who are thinking, this doesn't appeal to me because it's for Linux, there is a chance to install it on your Windows box. But I still encourage you to install Linux instead. Uh, and then there are, of course, installers for Ubuntu 10.04, 9.10, 9.04, 8.10. And you'll find it in the repositories as well for 10.10. Side note down there, you can run it without installing. CR, what do you mean? Oh no, running the latest Joe, Joe Kosher without installing. Okay, so we can't. Oh, if you have you another have have version. version so you I see, so you can get the BZR, uh, mm -hmm. like the latest build. Anyways, check it out. Uh, JoeKosher.org is their website. <laughs> We'll do 12 different pronunciations in one night, and you'll be able to download the application from there. Fantastic. Fantastic. No nano dots tonight? No nano dots tonight. We gave away the last ones. Sorry, dude. But you can still find out more cat5.tv slash nano dots. And uh, certainly if you purchase some, make sure you let them know that you uh, heard of them through us. That'd be good. I wanted to briefly touch on our disposable uh, hardware mentality, and I think this hits close to home for John. Who, uh, I, uh, what is it that you're that you're studying in school that, that pertains to this? It is, it's a business management course called Green Business Management. Green Business Management. And it touches on everything. everything yeah. That we are doing, which is really unsustainable in the long term. Stuff that we're doing that's unsustainable. I'll just repeat because I don't have a microphone on you. Unfortunately, we got to do something about that. I, w I went into. Uh, the future shop this week and I, I'm just I'm shocked by the that mentality because I don't share that mentality I've got the same cell phone that I've had for for years I think eight years and it still works that much my guitar is older than you are I'm sure oh, sorry. but I don't I don't like the thought of throwing things in a dump just because there's something newer and better right I went in because we we had a problem with one of our webcams the Microsoft life cam that I purchased there and I'm because of my mentality that I, I don't want to be the kind of person who just th throws something away. So it didn't work. I didn't go into the store within the 30 days because I wanted to try everything I could, knowing that they're just going to throw it out. I wanted to try everything that I could to try to get the thing working. I installed new firmware. I installed new drivers. Reinstalled my operating system. Tried it on different computers. Still no go. So finally, four months later, after all this trial, um, I took it in and they said they wouldn't take it back because it's beyond the 30 days. You have to take it back within that 30 days. Well, if I had done that, you would have just thrown it out and I, and I would have lost that chance to try getting this thing to work and it would have just ended up in the landfill, guaranteed. So then on that same mentality, as I'm going out of the store, I came across this flyer Ooh. and nothing, nothing about a particular store. This is a mentality <coughs> that we have in our in in our world, really. I don't know if you can see that, John. If you can get in a little. You see that? Don't fix it, replace it. That that we we're publishing posters that say, don't don't fix your old phone, and don't fix that old toaster, don't fix the DVD player. Go out and buy a new Blu-ray because you need it, which you, which is not necessarily true. 
I, I think that we as a, as a population, and not to, to rant or anything, but I think that we need to really be mindful of the fact that, that our world, we have to be careful that we don't run out of resources. We need to be recycling. We need to be using things to the best of our ability to, to the point where they seriously cannot be repaired anymore. And I think that's a mentality that we need to avoid. So. It's, it's very difficult for the consumer, though. You take it in is. your cell phone. It's but that's uh, been pushed on They'll give you a free on one if you, if you commit for a oh, few yeah. more years. They offered me a free, free new phone. If you phone. want yours repaired, it's going to be flat $150. I was standing there in line. They said, do you want a new phone? You've got 145 FIDO dollars because you've been with us so long without upgrading your phone. You can get a new one for free today. I said, my old one works. <laughs> yeah, so. But it's tough. You know, it, it's not easily re repaired anymore. True, Everything's but component. it still works. I can understand yeah, but if I it mean, breaks. If something doesn't work, it's not yeah. easy to get them repaired. Certainly, and we had that happen with uh, a TV and our DVD player yeah. recently. So what I ended up doing is I'm using the DVD player as a 5.1 surround sound, and we've got a second DVD player running the actual DVD. It's the best I can do to, to keep that thing going as long as I can. But I think we need to be careful that we don't subscribe to that mindset. There was a, show, a documentary that I saw once where everything that we buy, we're voting because the companies know what it is that we're buying. And this is why when I buy a printer, I'm, I'm looking at Brother because I know that they have sustainability in mind and that they're working towards, uh, you know, they, they have environmental consciousness. So uh, I find that, that that's very important when I'm shopping. When we buy something, we're voting. So do we buy something that they're just trying to put this mindset on us, don't fix it, replace it? I think we need to be careful of that for sure. That's my rant for tonight from the future, from the 24th century, because <laughs> the world is not what it used to be from where I am. There you go. Well, I guess, you know what, I, I really have to uh, get going back up to the Enterprise. We're almost out of time. We're going to leave us back here on Earth, are you? Well, it's been a lot of fun, and getting to interact with your species. While primitive, now watch that hockey stick. <laughs> I can make it disappear. <laughs> I have that power. You should take this with you. Show the kids back home. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have room for that kind of thing on the Enterprise. Brilliant. I hope everyone has had a fun night tonight. Hey, this is Category 5 Technology TV, and uh, you'll find us online at www.category5.tv. But I've got to go, so I'll just kind of, I, I suppose, leave things to you. Well, here I am. Okay. And, well. and, and there you go. Oh my goodness. I, I, I think he's gone, John. What do we do now? Well, well, that was episode 161. We're gone. 162. I was, I was in the past. Um, but we'll be back next week with... I, I hope Robbie makes it back for next week. That'll be episode 163. We have all kinds of great stuff in store for you. And... Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the show tonight. This is uh, Eric Kidd. We miss uh, Lieutenant uh, Commander Robbie Ferguson. That's how a Canadian would say it. Lieutenant Commander Robbie Ferguson. I'm Eric Kidd. We'll see you all again next week. Here we are back on the bridge of the Enterprise, and I'd love to show you how all this is done. Behind me, of course, is a green screen. You can see myself there, and it, this is actually a channel on Wirecast. There I am on my uh, Microsoft Life Cam, and I can move this around the screen. That's on the green screen, because using chroma key, there I am. So I can place myself there, turn on chroma key, and now I've got this seamless. Now I put myself there because it would hide the fact that I have no legs. <laughs> Because as a matter of fact, this is how the screen actually looks in reality. So with this picture, for example, I'm able to get myself and I can position myself anywhere on the screen that I like. I can zoom in and out to make it work with the scene because you want to make sure that uh, everything looks like it's proportional to the scene itself. And now if that's what I save, that's where it's going to place me on the scene. For my close-up shot, or uh, let's use the bridge view for example, you'll notice that I'm actually sitting behind the console. This effect was accomplished using 
an application called GNU Image Manipulation Program, with which I was able to take my scene, and then using the GIMP, I was able to cut out just the desk area for the, uh, for the terminal, and place that atop everything else. So now, channel B being me, I actually fall below this channel, the foreground channel. That channel, of course, is nothing but this, which I've placed where, it meant, uh, where it's meant to go. And there you have that effect of being able to type on, I'll type push buttons, and that's how that works. The software that we use in order to create this live chroma key or green screen effect here at Category5.tv is called Telestream Wirecast. I'd encourage you to check it out at Telestream.net. I had a lot of fun this week. I hope you did too. And I can't wait to see you next week when I'll be back on planet Earth Tuesday night at 7 here at Category5.tv. Until then, have a great week. And of course, uh, have a safe and fun Halloween. And you know what's coming. Live long and prosper.